Good morning and welcome to News at 10 on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and here are the latest headlines. Finance Minister to attempt to build a consensus over the goods and service tax bill. Arun Jaitley to hold meeting with state finance ministers in Delhi today. Proposed amendments to be discussed. In a landmark order, Supreme Court allows a rape survivor to terminate 24-week pregnancy. Apex Court allows a rape victim to abort after medical board recommends termination of fetus. Worst mass killing in Japan since the end of World War II. 19 people have been killed in a knife attack at a care centre for people with mental disabilities. Former employee of care facility admits to killings. Democrats' pursuit of unity falters on first day of convention. Sanders' backers revolt on opening day. Speakers struggle to carry out business as angry Sanders supporters roar their disapproval. The big story this morning, uh, Bangladeshi police uh, stormed a militant uh, hideout in Dhaka neighborhood and killed nine suspected Islamic extremists after a gun battle this morning. Meanwhile, another extremist was shot and arrested during the raid in Kalyanpur. Police say that they cordoned off an apartment building after suspects threw a small hand bomb at the officers who were conducting a block raid in the area after midnight. Now, the Islamist gunmen exchanged fire intermittently throughout the night as the neighborhood was sealed off by hundreds of heavily armed police and the elite security force, that is the Rapid Action Battalion. Now, Dhaka Additional Police Commissioner uh, Sheikh uh, Masoof uh, Hassan, who led the raid, uh, said that all the 10 militants were members of an Islamist extremist group, but uh, did not say which group uh, they belonged to. Now, Bangladesh is reeling from a wave of deadly attacks by Islamist extremists. Earlier this month, five armed men sh stormed an upscale cafe in Dhaka's diplomatic zone and killed at least 20 hostages, including 18 foreigners, in an attack which was later claimed by the Islamic State. All right, that is the big story that we are tracking this morning. Now, Bangladesh has been hit by such a extremist attacks uh, since re recently and uh, this is the latest uh, that we are getting uh, they have uh, the police there has stormed a militant hideout in dhaka neighborhood and they have killed nine suspected uh, islamist extremists uh, this was after a gun battle this morning for more on this uh, let's uh, go across uh, to shamshul uh, arifil who's a political analyst he is joining us on the phone line uh, from dhaka uh, good morning, sir, and thank you so much for joining us this morning. Sir, what we are seeing in Bangladesh uh, is uh, is something very recent because this has not been happening in that country. What has happened suddenly? Why are we seeing such uh, Islamist attacks so commonly now? Actually, uh, recently what has happened is the government in search of this, all this uh, extremist and terrorist throughout the country. Earlier, they were staying outside. Now, in the world pressure, they are all coming back to the country. Now, they are trying to concentrate in Bangladesh to regroup themselves. So, after the Gulshan attack, hmm. the government is in search all over the country now. Then, uh, they are under pressure. Hmm. So, recently... Uh... Uh, all right. Uh, well, we seem to have lost that uh, contact line now uh, with the anal analyst. Uh, we'll... Uh, try to connect, uh, connect back to him and get you more on that story. Let's move on in the bulletin. Well, in an attempt to build a consensus over the goods and a service tax bill, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley will hold a meeting with the state finance ministers in the national capital today. Arun Jaitley will discuss the proposed amendments to the GST bill, which is likely to be listed for discussion in the Rajya Sabha, following the finance minister's consultations with the Empowered Committee of State Finance Ministers. Meanwhile, the Congress has blamed the internal differences within the BJP for the non-passage of the GST bill. I say this with a full sense of responsibility and knowledge that there is internal differences of opinion within the BJP. I also know that before the Uttar Pradesh, 
अगर जीएसटी लाया जाएगा तो इस पर इन्फ्लेशन की मुसीबत हमें सहना होगा तो इस पर आप बोलते जाइए और कांग्रेस को दोषी ठहराते जाइए On to some Parliament news, and the government on Monday reiterated its commitment on reservation after the issue was raised by the opposition members in the Lok Sabha. Here are the details. Raising the issue of OBC reservations during zero hour in the Lok Sabha on Monday, the RJD and SP accused the government of using the creamy layer formula as a tool to strangulate OBC candidates by denying them entry into top services in the IS and IPS. Members claim that following the implementation of the seventh pay commission recommendations, children of government employees working in the lower level cannot make it to civil services as the income criteria in the creamy layer formula creates. ओबीसी आरक्षण में क्रिमी लेयर का सहारा लेकर यूपीएससी में पिछड़े वर्ग के छात्रों के भविष्य के साथ अन्याय किया जा रहा है अब बड़े साजिश के तहत सेट एजेंडा के तहत ओबीसी के आरक्षण को समाप्त करने की घनघोर साजिश जो है इस देश में हो रहा है कि जो यूपीएससी के रिजल्ट होने के बाद डीओपीटी मिनिस्ट्री ने जो प्रधानमंत्री जी के अंडर में आता है उस मिनिस्ट्री ने जिस तरह से इंटरप्रिटेशन किया क्रीमी लेयर का मैं दर्जी कह सकता हूं कि देश के तकरीबन 60 फीसदी जो देश के पिछड़े हैं उन पिछड़ों के साथ कांग्रेस ने भी पहले गलत किया और बीजेपी उससे ज्यादा गलत कर रही है दर्जी Home Minister Rajnath Singh, however, rejected the charge, saying that the centre is committed towards reservation for OBCs, and assured that he was ready to get the issue examined to clear any confusion. Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar also said that the government is ready for any change in the formula. कि आप क्रीमी लेयर की इसके अंतर्गत आते हैं कि नहीं आते हैं ताकि भविष्य में दूसरे कैंडिडेट्स कोर्ट में न चले जाएं और मामला लिटिगेशन में न फंस जाए केवल इसलिए केवल जानकारी मांगी जाती है इसके अतिरिक्त और कुछ नहीं हुआ यही और यह एक पॉलिसी डिसीजन है और किसी भी हमारे ओबीसी के कैंडिडेट्स को किसी प्रकार की कोई क्षति नहीं पहुंचने पाएगी जैसे जयप्रकाश नारायण यादव जी ने और धर्मेंद्र यादव जी ने यहां चित्र खड़ा किया ये सच्चाई से पूरा दूर है भारतीय जनता पार्टी और नरेंद्र भाई मोदी जी के नेतृत्व वाली एनडीए पूरा ओबीसी के आरक्षण के बारे में हम कटिबद्ध है The BJP demanded that the National Commission for Backward Classes should be granted constitutional status to give it more teeth in tackling cases of violation of OBC rights. K. C. Venugopal of the Congress Party also raised the issue of inflation and demanded a short duration discussion on the issue. This is Ravindra Shiran's report for Rajya Sabha TV. And the government aims to save 40,000 crore rupees on account of lower coal imports this fiscal. Now, Coal Minister Piyush Goyal informed the Rajya Sabha on Monday that increased supply of coal has made India a power surplus nation. Apprising the upper house on coal reserves during question hour, Coal Minister Piyush Goyal said that India reduced its import bill of the dry fuel by more than 24,000 crore rupees in the last fiscal. Goyal asserted that the domestic production of thermal coal would soon result in complete import substitution. He added that no thermal power plant at present is facing a shortage of coal. Today's power surplus and the hydro उसको हमने कोयले के उत्पादन से बिजली से बढ़ा के उसको पूरा किया और देश में जितनी बिजली जो राज्य चाहता है उसको हम देने के आज स्थिति में आ गए हैं। Responding to another query on liquidation of coal stock, Goyal said that after the Supreme Court judgment cancelling coal blocks, e-auctions have increased transparency in allocation of coal blocks to private players. Traditionally, they were being given coal. So at the notified price without a due process after the Supreme Court judgment cancelling 204 coal blocks, this government in its wisdom thought it is necessary to bring the highest standards of transparency. India's coal reserves are estimated at about 301.56 billion tonnes. The reserves were predominantly in Jharkhand, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, Telangana and Maharashtra. 
Coal-based electricity generation accounted for almost 85% of the total electricity produced in India during the April to February period in financial year 2015-16. This is Kriti Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha TV. On to other news and in a landmark order, the Supreme Court on Monday allowed an alleged rape survivor to terminate her 24-week pregnancy due to an abnormal fetus. Now, citing the report submitted by Mumbai-based hospitals medical board, the apex court said that the continuation of a pregnancy would gravely endanger the life of the mother. The panel said the fetus is suffering with the grave medical abnormalities uh, like uh, no skull and liver and intestines uh, growing outside the body. Attorney General Mukul Rotagi appearing for the centre clarified to the Apex Court that the current ceiling of 20 weeks under the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act does not apply if there is a danger to the life of the mother. Rotagi further argued that the ceiling has been put to avoid the misuse of feticide. The petition filed in the matter has also challenged the constitutional validity of abortion laws in India. The petition argued by the senior advocate Colin Gonsalves says that the current laws deny women's rights to abort in case of extraordinary medical complications. As per the Supreme Court order, we were uh, being ordered to examine this patient and give whatever the findings. So. Our board really examined her not only in terms of obstetric but they also examined her sonologically what was the kind of condition of the child and her uh, pregnancy. At the same time we also got a psychiatric evaluation by our HOD psychiatry and we also looked at it from the anesthesia point of view and we uh, gave our report to the Supreme Court. News from Jammu and Kashmir, uh, the well uh, parts of Ali remains uh, under curfew for the 17th day in a row on Monday, paralyzing normal life in wake of widespread violence over the killing of militant Burhan Wani. The curfew remained in force in uh, the five districts of Anantnag, Kulgam, Pulwama, Shopia and Baramulla as the security forces uh, stopped a protest march by separatists to the Anantnag town from Srinagar. The police also detained separatist leaders Sayyid Ali Shagilani and Mirwais Umar Farooq to avoid any untoward incident. Mobile, internet services and train services remain suspended for the 17th day in the valley. However, mobile services were restored in Jammu. Now, Srinagar, Muzaffarabad, the bus service also resumed on Monday after remaining suspended for two weeks due to the unrest in the Kashmir Valley. And there is uh, no news of uh, the missing Indian Air Force uh, aircraft, even as uh, the coordinated search carried out by the Navy, Army and the Coast Guard continued on the fourth day on Monday. Now, hopes of finding uh, alive the 29 personnel on board the missing AN-32 aircraft in the Bay of Bengal receded as no survivor or debris were located, despite a massive search and rescue operation. The aircraft went off the radar 16 minutes after taking off from the Tambaram Air Base near Chennai on its way to Port Blair on 22nd of July. Now, 13 ships from the Navy and four Coast Guard ships along with 18 aircrafts which have done a total of over 250 hours of sorties are engaged in one of the biggest search operations of the recent times. <clears throat> On a summer weather update, at least four people have died in the last 24 hours as the flood situation worsened in three districts of West Bengal. More than 58,000 people have been affected in 150 villages of Jalpaiguri and Kooch Bihar districts. Meanwhile, in Assam, Chief Minister Sarbanan Sonuwal took stock of all the measures that are being taken by the deputy commissioners of the 16 flood-affected districts of the state. Over 6.4 lakh people are affected from the latest wave of flood across more than 1,200 villages in 14 districts. More than 20,000 people have taken shelter in 80 relief camps that have been established by the government. Meanwhile, uh, flood situation continued to be critical in neighbouring Arunachal Pradesh as well as the National Highway 52 was submerged, uh, rendering more than 100 families in the nearby village homeless. Moving on in the bulletin, Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the second phase of the Rashtrapati Bhavan Museum in the presence of uh, President Pranam Mukherjee and Vice President uh, Mohammad Hamid Ansari yesterday. The inauguration of the museum uh, marked the completion of four years of uh, President uh, Pranam Mukherjee as uh, the head of state. The museum uh, will uh, be a home uh, to around 2,000 artifacts uh, that will tell the tale of uh, the Rashtrapati Bhavan and the presidents of India. 
and will be open uh, for public from 2nd of October. Now, speaking on the occasion, Prime Minister called uh, President Mukherjee a guardian and a mentor. I was born in the world of Delhi. I was born in the world of Delhi. In this time, Rashpati Ji was a guardian, a mentor, and a lot of things. Well, time to slip into a very short break. Uh, we'll be back with international and sports news. Stay with us. Let's meet Lok Sabha MP from Mumbai Northeast, Kirish Sumaya, this time. पूरी हो या पानी पूरी हो हर मुंबई वाले को पसंद है अगर आप राजनीति में नहीं होते तो आज बड़ा पाव ही बेचते हैं बेचता कहीं लेकिन खाता जरूर वाच मी ऑन इट माय लाइफ ओनली ऑन राज्य तबादी Welcome back. Now an update on the political crisis in Nepal. Well, a day after Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli put in his papers, President Bidya Bhandari on Monday called on all the political parties to elect a new premier through consensus. Now, if that fails, after seven days, the president will again ask these parties to form a majority government, while the Nepali Congress and the Maoist Center have already agreed to form a new government under Prachanda, the country is the second and the fourth largest parties in parliament, that is uh, CPN, UML and RPP Nepal, have not uh, extended their support to him so far. After the resignation of KP Sharma Oli, the leader of Nepal's former Maoist rebel movement looks set for a comeback as the Prime Minister. The Nepali Congress and the Maoists are in talks on forming government led by Pushpa Kamal Dehel or Prachanda. The developments came after President Bidya Devi Bhandari met with the top leaders of three biggest political parties of the country to forward the new government formation process, giving them seven days to reach a political consensus. <laughs> इस कारण सभी बारे पची सकारात्मक ढंग ले छीटू निकाह देनी प्रक्रिया माने जान जो बनने विश्वास है राष्ट्रपति को Earlier, Oli's government was relegated to a minority after a key ally, Communist Party of Nepal Maoist Center, led by Dahal, withdrew support. Oli announced his resignation in an address to parliament shortly before he was to face a no-trust vote jointly registered by the Nepali Congress and the Maoists. Oli is accused of not reneging on power-sharing deal and not handling Madheshi protest properly. Oli's likely successor, Kamal Dahal, who will be Nepal's ninth prime minister in a decade, is seen leaning more towards India. श्री केपी शर्मा ओली के प्रधानमंत्री रहते हुए भारत के और नेपाल के रिश्ते बहुत खराब हो गए थे उनके चले जाने के बाद जो सरकार अस्तित्व में आएगी भारत और नेपाल के रिश्तों को सुदृढ़ करने के लिए काम करेगी ऐसा हमारा विश्वास है Though Dahal or Prachanda is set to become the new Prime Minister, he might not be able to form a government based on consensus. As the CPN, UML and RPP Nepal, the second and fourth largest parties in Parliament, are unlikely to extend support to him. If political parties fail to reach consensus on forming a new government, Parliament will begin the process of electing a new Prime Minister on the basis of a majority vote. If he does seal his comeback, however, one of Dahal's first key tasks will be to finally implement a new constitution and resolve protests in Nepal's southern plains. With Bureau Inputs, this is Akhilesh Suman's report for Rajya Sabha TV. News from Japan, where 19 people have been killed in a knife attack at a care centre for people with mental disabilities. Now, the attack in uh, uh, Sangmihara, west of Tokyo, happened in the early hours today. Another 26 people were injured, 20 of them seriously. Now, this is the worst mass killing in Japan since the end of World War II. The police arrested a man who allegedly admitted to the killings at a nearby police station shortly afterwards. The 26-year-old, a former employee of the care facility, named as uh, 
Satoshi Umatsu is reported to have told police that, that he wanted disabled people to disappear. But the facility where the attack happened is a care center set on extensive grounds so with separate living quarters for men and women. It had about 160 residents at the time of the attack. Reports say that the attacker entered the facility at about 2.30 local time and began stabbing people inside. News from the U.S. Uh, where tensions are running high in Philadelphia as the Democratic Con Convention got underway. The four-day convention to nominate Hillary Clinton for the White House witnessed a furore over embarrassing leaked emails. Now, more than 19,000 emails showed party officials working to undermine the insurgent presidential campaign of Clinton's primary rival, Bernie Sanders. The U.S. says that Russia engineered the release of sensitive party emails in order to influence the polls. Now, Sanders urged his supporters to back Clinton, but drew jeers from his supporters. Some of his backers are reluctant now to get behind Clinton. First Lady uh, Michelle Obama, Senator Cory Booker and Senator Elizabeth Warren are among the other speakers on the first day. President Barack Obama and former President Bill Clinton will also speak, but later in the week. I'm proud that our party's platform will help not the wealthy, not the 1%, but instill it will help our struggling middle, middle class, our working families, the disadvantaged and the disabled. It will help the less fortunate. Our platform has passed my father's test, and it has done so not by seeking common ground, but aspiring to higher ground. Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine want an America where there are no barriers to opportunity, equality, or justice. Excuse me. Excuse me. Where we lift each other up from every race, religion and sexual orientation is heard and respected. On to some uh, sports news now. And the Indian Wrestling Federation has backed a Rio-bound wrestler Narsing Yadav, whose Olympic participation is in serious doubt after a failed dope test. Now, WFI says Narsing is innocent and that he would get a clean shit in the final NADA hearing that will take place on Wednesday. A day after India's Rio Olympics bound wrestler Narsing Yadav tested positive for a banned steroid, the Wrestling Federation of India threw its weight behind Narsing Yadav, saying the grappler is a victim of conspiracy. Doubting foul play, WFI President Brij Bhushan Sharan Singh said that Federation believes Narsing is innocent and will support him to the hilt. Singh also hoped Narsing Yadav would get a clean shit in the final NADA hearing on Wednesday, the result of which is expected the next day. Agar Narsing Yadav ne किसी भी शक्तिवर्धक दवा का प्रयोग किया होता तो वो स्पेन के टूर्नामेंट से लड़ने से बचने की कोशिश करते ऐसा नरसिंह यादव ने नहीं किया और वहां पर भी वो मेडल लेकर के आए एक महीने के अंदर तीन बार दो टेस्ट होना किसी खिलाड़ी का ये भी कहीं ना कहीं संदेह पैदा करता है However, his participation at the Rio Games is in serious doubt as he is facing a provisional suspension by the sports authority. Narsing Yadav ko provisionally suspend kiya hua hai aur agar panel unko exonerate kar deta hai, unko thik paata hai, to wo phir dobara se team ke andar shamil ho jayega. In his defense, Narsing said his supplements and water had been sabotaged. He further claimed that he had undergone around 25 to 30 drug tests in his 15-year career as a professional freestyle wrestler and had come out clean every time. Olympics ne pass aur mujhe kitni achi taiyari karna hota, main dope kyu lunga? Aur jaise ki mera room partner ka bhi dope positive aaya hai, to uska to koi competition hi nahi hai. To us jaan bus kar mare kisi khane mein ya kisi supplement mein kisi ne planning ke through kiya hai, to iski usse Meanwhile, the National Anti-Doping Agency NADA had confirmed that the wrestler's roommate and training partner Sandeep Yadav also tested positive for the same banned substance. I have given the Federation to which I have doubt and all the names of them. And I have written in the letter that I have been charged with it. And I have never taken any dope. And all of this is going to be a mistake. And I have to go to the 
Narsingh took India's berth in the 74 kg category at the Rio Games by winning a bronze medal at last year's World Championships in Las Vegas. However, his sport was put in jeopardy when Sushil Kumar, who won a bronze in the 66 kg category in Beijing and a silver in London, moved up in weight and asked for a bout between the pair to determine who should compete in Rio. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And finally, well, Kargil Vijay Divas is uh, being observed today across the country. It was on this day in 1999 that the Indian Army, as part of Operation Vijay, recaptured Indian posts in Kargil, which had been occupied by the Pakistan Army. So we leave you with these visuals from Dras in Kashmir as the country pays tributes to its Kargil martyrs. Thanks so much for watching. Welcome, yeah,